So my new Pine 64 Pine Sill soldering iron, which is a little portable lightweight soldering iron, just arrived today. Ordered it off Amazon. It's running Iron OS operating system, which is an open source operating system, which is quite sort of quite nice for a soldering iron. I mean, you can get sort of, you know, updated, various updated features and so on added to it as well. But why I liked it was, is the soldering iron, not only is it sort of quite lightweight at about 28 grams, including its tip, it's got a shorter tip, which is quite nice for preciser controlled work. And it heats up in about 12 seconds or so, which is nice and quick versus my old one where, you know, I'd have to wait a good minute plus before it heated up. It also has sleep mode with movement detection and auto shutdown, which you can configure and set, you know, yourself. The other nice thing is it's got Bluetooth LE. I'm not sure I'm going to use this, but you can get live readings from it while you're busy working, you know, regarding temperature and other various parameters that you can read. And what I'd especially like about this is that it's got spare tips, various spare parts, LED light rings, and various other things you can get for it. So plenty of spare parts, because that often becomes a problem. And I see many people, when they buy these things, they actually buy it with a whole bunch of spare parts, actually, just in case so that you've got them, really. So let me just show you quickly how it works. It powers off USB-C or the barrel connector as well at the back. That I think it's a 12-volt barrel connector. Just remember you need the right USB-C cable and power supply to provide enough power for quick heat. Otherwise it's going to be slow or it's not going to heat up at all. And yeah, you switch it on and you'll see it's basically indicating press plus to heat up for soldering or press the back button here for menu. And yeah, it's got a couple of uh, different menu options. I can actually just go through to the, oops, I wanted to go to the user interface actually. and just set it for detailed view it gives you a little bit more information it's also got a little boot up logo you can set as well which is quite nifty uh, there's the logo there's the detailed idle screen and i think i've already got detailed solder screen on yes so if you leave it it'll also pop up a little bit of a help sort of a scrollable help there so let me just go back there and yeah it's reading room temperature i suppose at the moment really but you can just press the plus button and there she goes it's set for 320 so it's already reached operating sense temperature as quickly as that and if you want to you can adjust it with a quick press up or down will adjust it by i think it's one degree or so like that and if you long press it, it adjusts by 10. But that's, of course, all configurable. So if I long press that now, it should go to... Oh, sorry, the long press on the front is going to give you boost temperature, which will take it up to 420 degrees, actually. So, yeah, that's basically it. I suppose that's all the soldering iron really sort of does. But I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what the open source software does with regards to adding additional features and so on to it. You'll see it does actually rotate its display. If I turn it off, you'll see it also cools down fairly quickly, actually. It only takes about a minute or two. But it's also nice to get confirmation that, you know, it's reached room temperature and it's safe to touch the tip. So that's it. Looking forward to sort of happy soldering jobs when they eventually happen or are needed.